So I figured I'd shoot a video of what I've been working on. This is probably going to be used later for one of the episodes that I'm working on for an OMG project called uh, Geek Tweak Customs. But it's a little bit shaky because it's being taken on my iPhone, so bear with me, but I figured it'd be easier than taking pictures. I'm still probably going to take some pictures just so if I don't like the video, I can put those up instead when I actually make the Geek Tweak Custom show. But the main thing is today... I've been working on these Black Series figures over the last few weeks, kind of painting them little by little, and actually the Black Series figures customizations I just recently started. This Kylo figure, for example, is a Kmart exclusive Kylo figure that is for Starkiller base, and he has the weathering on the bottom that makes him look like he was in the snow, as well as having this platform that you can stand him in that came with him, but he had the helmet on. So the helmet was there. I took that off. All I had to do was heat it up. And when I heated it up, I put the helmet down so I could use it. I'm probably going to make the little sandbox that he has, or the box of ashes, I should say, not sand, that he sets the helmet down on in the base and kind of use that and set the helmet down there. Or use it for when I'm doing killing Han scenes. Uh, but I started the hair on this. I painted a little bit of the back. It's the first layer there. The sculpt looks a lot like Adam Driver, but not 100%. Um, the main thing is the jawline is really different, but there really wasn't much you could do with the jawline because this was sculpted specifically for a Black Series figure. So if you notice in the Black Series, there really isn't much room to have maneuverability with the head and be able to fit on the sculpt. I don't have it pressed all the way down, and it's already pressing against that hood. Uh, the other thing is that I started on Han, I gave him weathering in the jacket to make it look more accurate to the movie. I also painted his hair because for some reason this Han that was released had brown hair, like a light brown hair, and Harrison Ford definitely has gray hair in the movie. So I gave him a sh shade of gray as just a single paint now. I'm going to put some highlights and different tone into that later and make that a little bit differently. The other thing I worked on is BB-8. BB-8 is finished pretty much now unless I want to add a little bit of the sand shade to him. Uh, the top of BB-8 when the figure came out was very washed. The bottom wasn't. So it made it look like it was just not one piece. It was two pieces together. So I made it look a lot closer to the movie just by adding a black wash to it and a little bit of sanding wash by doing a lighter color over the top and then wiping it off to make the shading not 100% white, but more of like an off-white. I also started weathering on Ray, and it's a very light weathering because I'm going to do Ray a little bit at a time. The main thing is that the face sculpt on this, and I talked about the face sculpts earlier, the face sculpt is Daisy because a lot of these figures today are digitally scanned. The problem is that the paint on this is so horrible. It's just basically the plastic with, it looks like they gave her lipstick because this is the first line. They improved that a little bit with a re-release that they made, but it's still pretty horrible. Um, also, it's very well sculpted everywhere else, including the face. I'm just going to have to repaint it just so it makes it look a lot closer to Daisy. That's the cool thing about these Black Series figures is that they do have sculpting in them that is very detailed and accurate. They're just not painted well. And that's the majority of the time this happens with the Black Series figures. Even in the back, I'm going to redo Hux. I picked up Hux the other day at a Walmart. He is a rare figure now, so he's harder to find. I'm glad I picked him up, which means the only main cast that of uh, the ones that haven't been released yet, I need Chewy, and that's it. Um, C-3PO is coming out later, so I'm going to add him when he comes out. And the other cool thing about the Black Series figures is they are 6-inch figures. I'm very much a stickler for scale. So like these Ghostbusters figures, for example, I have. They are the same scale. They are six inch figures. Um, I got the Walter Peck that came with the containment unit so I could have the containment unit. And then I got that set of four Ghostbusters that had the 30th anniversary where the backpacks were removable so that I could put them on other figures. I made a picture where I actually put it on a Poe and on Ray so I could do Poe, Ray, Egon, and I'm probably gonna do that again as a newer version since I have the removable backpacks now. Also, these new DC Multiverse figures are a 6-inch scale as well. Just picked up Reverse Flash recently. Uh, the Reverse Flash, though, same as a lot of the Black Series figures, it's sculpted really well, and you can kind of tell, like, the mask and everything. 
is there, the sculpt is there, but it's not being sh brought out to the front. So I'm going to do a black wash on that probably, specifically because the reverse flash has dark tones in his costume. And if I do a rough wash on that, it will make it look a lot closer to being screen accurate. The arrow figure I'm probably going to do something completely different with. I don't like the way that they released this one compared to the one that's the 7-inch line, which is amazing sculpt in the 7-inch, but this one not so much. And I want to have an arrow figure that goes to Flash, and I wish they're going to be releasing more of the multiverse figures in this scale. The DC line usually releases 7-inch figures, which are really good, but I've noticed that now you kind of have different scales. Like you have 5-inch figure scales, 6-inch figure scales, which is what you're seeing now, and then there's 7-inch scales, um, like the Amanda Ripley figure that my fiancé has is a 7-inch figure, and all the Stargate figures I have are 7-inch, and then there's a couple of DC figures I have, like Captain Cold and also uh, Felicity from Arrow. I got a figure of her. It's also 7 inches. So these are all 6-inch, though, and displaying them next to a 7-inch doesn't really work right, so I like having these 6-inch scale figures that I can kind of come up with scenarios and do pictures and movies and this is probably going to be what's going to be the focus of Geek Tweet Customs is I'm going to do a lot of video like this but not this video on this iPhone this is just for an example's sake and kind of giving you an idea of what I've been doing and also probably going to use part of these clips later in some sort of project on as far as the episode Geek Tweet Customs isn't going to premiere until later this year at least this episode I'm going to do a Star Wars episode close to when Rogue One comes out, and I'm going to do a Ghostbusters episode closer to when the Ghostbusters movies come out, which is why I have these figures already out and ready to go. And then I have Flash for, well, I don't even know what, and I have these. Oh, yeah, the alien eggs in the back. Oh, sorry about the shaking there. The cool thing about these alien eggs is that they are in an egg carton, and they legitimately look like the eggs from Alien. They're in the 7-inch scale, though, but they work for 6-inch. They're not too ridiculously huge that they look out of place on 6-inch figures. So that's good. And Allison has an Amanda Ripley that's 7 inches, so it works for that feature as well. At some point, we want to pick up the power loader because that's going to be a really cool addition to just have out. But that's pretty much it for now, what I've been working on. And again, I'm going to get back to Han. Also, as far as accessories, I did just get this. I pre-ordered this a long time ago. But I got it from Hobby Link Japan, and Hobby Link Japan has things that are back-ordered a lot, so you can kind of pay for them, put them in your little warehouse, and then eventually they have to be shipped out when they get them. So I got this the other day, and this is a high school locker. So I have to put this kit together, I'm going to have to glue it and then actually build the locker, but if you look at it in comparison... Like say next to Han, six inch figure. So that's about right because if you think about school lockers to someone that's six foot high, is that they are really, again, I didn't, I didn't put the top or the bottom on this yet. And if you look at it at level, it's about the right size. So it's going to fit a six inch figure pretty well. So I'll be able to use that for just pictures or scenarios of things. I might pick up a few of these later if they come back in stock because uh, they were really cheap. And I like the accessories like that that are small and easy to add to scenarios to make different things of. But for now, I just have the Kylo that I'm mainly working on. And again, Kylo, the head, is not even on the figure. I just kind of set it on there because it helps with being able to paint it. I got some paint today, and I also got a little bit of a rig that I can put together that will send it up. And now Kylo is decapitated. But the rig is essentially uh, allowing me to paint the figure's heads when they're not on the figure, which will help a lot, especially with Kylo, because I haven't put the figure head on it yet. But now Kylo is dead, and I guess this is the alternate ending to Force Awakens. Han survives, Kylo gets decapitated, and that's pretty much how it happens. And Hux is just in the background, just standing there. He doesn't care. He's glad that Kylo got killed by, apparently, maybe his own lightsaber that is still on. All right. Bye.